welcome everyone. Uh, we're on our first uh, town hall for the month of July, and we're going through our regular agenda with DAO committee, governance squad, grant support, and facilitation updates. Then we're going to have a small space dedicated to discuss about our headquarters, our in-world headquarters. And for that, we're going to have a uh, five minutes um, uh, sharing of each one of the Sandstorm contest winners. And after that, we're going to have 15 or 20 minutes to actually discuss about um, the headquarters uh, that we're, uh, and then the conversations that we're having on the working group. After that, we're going to have our usual open forum for you to comment on something, ask questions, or debate about something. And after that all, we're having an in-world meetup at Wondermine. So we have a, <laughs> a really huge agenda today. We're trying to uh, go straight forward. So first of all, I'll pass it to one of the members of the committee, if there's one, Tobik or HP, are you there? Okay, I think we can skip it. And if they join, join let's ask them for the updates. So next uh, topic was the governance squad updates. So I'll pass it to Gina. Thank you. Hey folks, how are you doing? Gina here. Um, all right, um, just a couple of updates. So we wrapped up our previous grant. You can see the report in our, I will share the link, um, but you can see the report in our previous grant proposal. Our second semester uh, budget renewal grant proposal is up and ready for voting. Um, also, we've been working in some technical uh, maintenance tasks that we were uh, delaying uh, because we're basically prioritizing uh, shipping some features from our previous period. And at the moment, we are in conversations with the Snapshot team. We actually got our PR for the multi delegation strategy in Polygon approved. Um, and we're addressing some comments from the Snapshot team. So we will hopefully unblock ourselves uh, to release that. And finally, the team is working on the latest um, release of the bidding engineering process, which is uh, the bid submission process um, with the dashboard for C open tenders and bids. So that's going to be released uh, next week, hopefully. Um, so those are the things that we are we are need. Next steps are going to be if the, the budget renewal for our uh, team gets passed to work on the um, automation of the, like the automatic, automatic issuance of the DAO badges based on activity, like for top voters, uh, for proposal creators, uh, grantees, and things like that. So that's gonna be our, our next step. Um, yeah, I think that's it. To be honest, I don't have a lot to, sh like a lot to share because they were mostly technical tasks, but I will share some links in the chat uh, right away. Thanks a lot for that, Gino. I'm really excited that the badges are coming. Uh, OK, so with that said, I'll pass it to the Grand Support Squad for sharing their updates. Hey there, how are you, everybody? From where are you listening today? This is Fifi from the Grand Support Squad, and it's freezing down here in Buenos Aires. But today we have some hot topics that we want to cover. On the fourth, we have an amazing three grantees joining us to showcase their amazing projects. So let's take a look to the today's agenda. It's going to be testing Tuesday, recognition of decentral and DAO support. When I should create my update, quarterly budget, revocation committee, documentation, and community builders. And uh, today we are going to have Mesh, Exodus, and Truban. So let's go into start. After, oh, I want to mention something. After that we saw our grantees videos, you will have the opportunity to raise some questions. I'm not reading right now the chat because I'm super focused. So let's start talking about Testing Tuesday. This week, we finished our first season of 18 session of Testing Tuesdays. It was a very fun and useful session with DCL metrics. 
where they show up, how to use the product, and took notes to make improvement based on the community needs. So stay tuned because we are coming back with a lot of improvement at the Testing Tuesday initiative in August. Next. So we might have heard, you might have heard from the recent passive proposal that asks guarantee to recognize the support given by the central and DAO. You will find the link here in the chat, but what does this mean? It is now mandatory requirement for all the grant recipients to acknowledge the central land support. But don't worry, for those who have already received grants, we will have a conversation to see if it's still possible to recognize the support from the central land DAO in their project. Um, so, next. Many people were asking about why they keep losing their updates and they get a little bit confused on when doing updates. So, the, what happened with this? In the past, when they had to create the update one more after their proposal. So, they were like sync with their voting period. Now, this week, um, they could, well, I mean, and that could be any date in the month, you know, and they get a little bit confused on how to report the, the past months on so on and so on. So, however, moving forward, we collaborated with the Gov app to make this more flexible approach, but this will only apply for the new best in contract created since this week. So what I mean, uh, uh, the updates date will synchronize with your uh, best in contract date. I mean, the day that you receive the payment, whether it's the first day of the month or or uh, in the middle of the month. So uh, we are apologize for the inconvenience that may cost to all the grantees that are already in the program, but we encourage you to schedule your app accordingly in the Google Calendar. And if you have question or any assistance regarding this, please contact your grant manager and we will do our best to help you. <laughs> ah, should I have my own TV show? Well, let's go on. Um, our topics. Finally, we have also published a very interesting post, blog post written by Sino from our team. Uh, we announced that the last uh, town hall. So if you weren't there, you can find the link here in the chat. Uh, um, this post provides insights from the last month of the grants program. Um, by reviewing the result of this second quarter, excluding the first quarter as it only includes changes executed in March 2027, we can drop some questions. Uh, the funds were not used as expected in the categories. The current categories is a broad and something missed. Each category should have better requirements and impact measuring, and we need to improve the documentation regarding category requirements. And for the last question, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I will continue. Um, do we need to have a new category uh, for the grant program? Well, let's see. I will recommend for you to read um, the blog post, and there you will find another amazing um, Excel with all the learnings and um, regarding budget. So as you all know, we are about to start the next quarter and in the same article, it's all the batch, the information for the next quarter. So please take a look and decide the best way to create your proposal and ask for the DAO support. Well, next, the revocation committee is already working, as you know. They have been focused on two grants proposals recommended by uh, the Grand Super Squad and they had community already the decision made for the Central Ambra scene, so you can see it here in the link everything is there and today we were they were were voting on the central and x so stay tuned and check their final message in the governor proposal so lastly well i wanted to circle back on this learning from the last quarter you know regarding categories because that was an issue with two grants and we were very sorry for, for that situation so we were like trying to 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 make some changes so for the documentation you will find now the documentation about category that you will be having more specific um things there i don't have the link here but it's i will put it there i will post it oh thank you senior you're so cute um well about the categories, we are learning about that. This is something new from this year, so we are keeping 
the work and trying to to get more information. And the thing that happens with uh, this from Brazil was that the project was so good and supported by the community, but uh, that category wasn't so sure. I would try to make it work, but finally the project is much bigger than that that category. So this leads us to to the idea to create another category. And I wanted to, to tell you that there will be an open session on July 20th that we were hosting to discuss the details of builders' categories. This is going to be a new one, if everybody's happy, such as what the type of the project and the eligibility requirements, milestone, among other topics. Uh, we would love to, for you to join and um, build this with us. Uh, so... I need to have some water. Um, we are ready, so ready to see our grantees. Natalie, are you there? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you okay, super great. well. Which one would you like me to start with? Well, let's go with Mesh. Okay. Give me one second. Yeah, Mesh, it's about to start. Bay say that she she's not able to join us today here in the chat, but you can discuss any anything in the grand chat. So I will put the the Discord link here. Okay, I will start it right now. Thank you for Perfect. the opportunity to update on our grant, which is community-led support for 3D artists, both for Mesh mm -hmm. and for Metaverse Art Week. We wanted to onboard 30-plus high-level creators and engage them in the Decentraland community. Mm -hmm. It was important for us to have that engagement because we wanted these, adver these artists to become advocates for mm -hmm. Decentraland in the wider art world. So we worked with the Mesh mentors, Nikki Fuego, or Job, and mm -hmm. Canessa to provide support via the Community Building Decentraland Discord. You can see it was a really, really active Discord channel. Um, the mentors was also conducted twice weekly FAFO sessions and started filming how-to guides for things like video installation, file counts, optimization, all the things that the artists were really struggling with. What we found is that over the last two weeks, those artists that didn't engage with the community have dropped out. We had four dropouts from artists that we didn't hear from through the Discord. Those artists that did engage have been absolutely delighted by the process and are so thrilled to be part of the exhibition. So the next step will be publishing all the content that has been created in a wider sense. We've just finished this process and we'd obviously like to invite you all to the opening of Mesh, which is happening next week on the 19th of July. Thank you again for all your support. Wow, oh, that was amazing. So stay tuned. Okay, next we are going to Exodus. In this video, I'm going to be going over. Oh, hold on one second. Right. Let, me, let me get it ready. Uh... Should I sing? Hi there. Great. <laughs> Do you want me to start playing or did you want to talk? <laughs> no, no. I'm actually not to play. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll hit play. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Exodus. Hey, sorry about that. I uh, when I unplugged my phone, it uh, it went to um without being on speaker. Uh, but but anyways, is what I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing on here as far as showing the video. Um, yeah, I have the video yeah. right now playing, and do you want? I'm just gonna hit play. If that's cool. Yeah, it sounds good. Perfect. Thank okay, you. Okay, just checking. Okay, <laughs> cheers. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Exodus Goodbye World grant and the accomplishments along the way. First off, I just want to say thank you to all of those who supported us for this grant and the project's development. We look forward to continuing our Exodus Goodbye World development in Decentraland and growing its user base. Let's start off with the player UI overhaul. Notice on the top left, there's a knot. There's an icon for trading bug reports, fog, and the eye is for UI. So for example, if you're in the cave and click it, it will become the same light as outside. Notice on the right, there's a flag. The backpack will be your inventory. The armor is the equipment. The check mark is your daily task. And at the bottom, you'll see your scavenger hunt progress. The stars is your skills. When clicking on skill icons, there will be more information at the bottom. Notice on woodcutting, there's level, XP, and level up in, meaning that that's the remaining XP to gain the following level. In this pop-up, you'll also see fishing, mining, cooking, 
forging, and workshop. The information icon has information about contacting us and reporting bugs. Click the icon and it will pop up a link. Exodus is built on a 10 by 15 minus one parcel. See here on the map. Here's a character running around Exodus at three and a half speed. Notice creatures on the edge of the map. Also notice the farm and the future will add a farming skill where players can plant seeds and grow plants and harvest them. Also notice the new trees. These trees have been made from scratch from the Exodus development team. They did a great job. We've introduced player to player drop trading. This means a player can drop an item and for 60 seconds, that player that dropped it is the only one that can see it. After 60 seconds, anyone can see it from any realm and pick it up. After two minutes, the item disappears permanently, if not picked up. For this example, I used an alternative account. After dropping with the other accounts on this account, we can now see that the items are starting to appear and can be picked up. Simply click on them to pick them up. They will appear in your inventory. Next is player to player trading. Both players must enable their trading for a trade to take place. Players can enable trading by clicking the knot on the top left and then clicking the trade icon. A trade icon will appear above other players' heads. Click on it to send a request. Players can accept or decline a trade offer. If they accept, a trade offer will appear. Players can offer any tradable items to another player. In this example, I was using two accounts to trade with myself, but players can trade with anyone else in the game. They can use meta money as a medium of exchange and can be earned in the game while playing. Once the parties have agreed upon a trade offer, they can both lock the trade. Once the trade is locked, players may not adjust the offer. This is a security feature. If players want to back out, they can simply click close. If they want to proceed, they can click accept. As you can see, the trade offer has been confirmed and finalized. The meta money is now in the pouch of this inventory and the items are in the inventory of the other players. This is a sheet of all the weapons, armors, amulets, rings, and shards that will be used for Exodus. They've been designed and created. They have not been implemented yet, but that is in the works. Armor and weapons break up into three categories of combat, melee, range, and mage. Melee is for close-up combat with swords. Range is for long distance combat with longbows and crossbows with bolts and arrows. Mage combat is long distance with staves and gems. For combat, players can easily attack an enemy by clicking on them. This combat instance is just a demo. Players will need to have the item equipped in order to swing it at the creature. This might be a bow, a sword, or a staff. They will also need the appropriate ammo, if ammo is needed. When a player is combating an enemy, there will be three stances for each combat style, whether it's range, mage, or melee. Enemies will be more vulnerable to different combat styles. Maybe one enemy's weak to mage, while another enemy's weak to melee, meaning that you can deal more damage with them by using the combat style that they're weakest in. When an enemy has been defeated, they will disappear and a drop will appear on the ground. Players will have the option to pick it up or leave it there. If they leave it there, within a minute, other players will have the opportunity to pick it up across realms or on the same realm. Combat stances are like rock, paper, scissors. If the opponent is doing scissors, you will want to be doing rock, except it won't be rock, paper, scissors. It will be whether a player is swinging a sword one way or another way, or maybe they're shooting arrows one way or a different way. Players must learn the combat stances to deal the greatest damage per second, which is also known as DPS. This won't prevent the players from hitting the opponent, but it will greatly depreciate the potential hits the player could have on them if they're in the wrong combat stance when they hit. There's also pets. There are skilling pets and there are combat pets. Pets can be unlocked by using a full shard. Shard pieces can be earned while skilling or in combat. Pets will spawn beside the player. The pet will follow the player wherever they go, whether they walk or whether they run. Skilling and combat pets have abilities. Skilling pets help a player while skilling, such as gathering resources, or using resources to create something. Combat pets will have abilities to benefit the player while in combat. 
pet abilities can be unlocked via edible stars. Edible stars can be earned in the game. There's the workshop skill. The workshop skill breaks down into three activities, carving, crafting, and assembling. Players can begin carving by equipping a knife. They may carve logs into wooden objects. Those wooden objects can be used to create things like longbows or tools for handles or fishing rods or staff rods, anything that needs a wooden piece to create. Overall, the workshop skill is how most items will be created and is a very important piece to the Exodus game. This particular clip of carving is at two and a half speed to preserve time. Carving and assembling have been implemented into the game. Crafting, on the other hand, has not been yet. Crafting will allow a player to craft leather into armors like range and melee. Crafting will allow a player to tan hide into leather. Hide can be earned while defeating enemies that drop hide. Correction, crafting will be used for ranging and mage gear. This is the assembly bench, very similar to the way the crafting bench will be. But what the assembly bench does is it allows multiple objects to be put together to create a completed item. This could be a sword blade with a sword handle or a pickaxe handle with a pickaxe head. In this example, I created crossbow bolts. A player must carve a sycamore log into a bolt shaft and then use the assembly table to attach feathers to the bolt shafts. To complete the crossbow bolt, a player must attach a bolt to the headless arrow. This is important because it will determine the type of crossbow bolt that it is. In this example, I am attaching a gold crossbow bolt to a headless arrow. We appreciate your support and look forward to the continued backing of the DAO as we progressively develop Exodus to a point of self-sustainability. Our future roadmap for Exodus, although not strictly in the following order, encompasses the following. Introducing pets, launching the V1 of combat, resetting all skill levels from the transition from alpha to beta, distributing rewards to the alpha stage participants, transitioning from the alpha to the beta stage, introduce our membership, which will be in the form of a battle pass like membership, migrating the code base to SDK seven, establishing an Exodus game currency on chain, crafting in-game items as NFTs with the provision of on and off chain ramp, developing an in-game Exodus exchange, broadening to worlds for additional land access and further development, extending beyond the current maximum level, introducing tool-based stats, incorporating a farming skill, introducing multiplayer combat, unveiling the main story plot. And one of our most important things is marketing. We plan several different strategies. Those strategies are paid advertisement, Web3 content creators, and monthly events, as well as covering many holidays. Our goal is to introduce as many people as possible to Decentraland through Exodus. We overpromised and we are over delivering. Despite encountering numerous obstacles, we've accomplished far more than what was initially proposed. The development of combat and pets are functional in their current form. We've additionally designed unique mechanics and attributes to provide players with a significantly more improved experience. Wow, that was amazing. Great. So, a round of applause for Exodus. Let's please continue the amazing talk in their Discord since we don't have a lot of time. So, uh, last is going to be our friend Shelly Dance and through that. Just rope, roll, and grab them. Soon we'll be living high and wide. My heart's calculating. My true love will be waiting. Be waiting at the end.
That was great. So now it's time to sashay away. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, if anyone there has any questions that we have to like, Shelly Bans, are you there? Hi. You should. Yeah. So if we don't have any more questions for the Grand Support Squad or any grantees, we can continue the discussion in our Discord channel. So thank you, everybody, for listening. See you next time. Thanks, PP. Always a nice host. Always nice to have you here. Uh, OK, so with grant support uh, squad updates uh, finalized, we are going to jump on our uh, facilitation updates. So I'm trying to go as fast as I can since we have lot to go through um but yeah the first thing that i wanted to share with you as an update is that tomorrow we're closing the uh the survey for the ama sessions that we shared a couple of days ago uh, i think it was two weeks ago uh that survey was intended to serve as a base for uh for trying to trying to improve those sessions for trying to to get more engagement for trying to uh, improve the content. So I'm going to share the link to that survey. It's really important for you if you have attended to one of those AMA sessions to, to respond to this survey. It only takes two or three minutes, so you're all welcome to do that. Uh, Related to this, we also wanted to remind you that the request for information period for uh, sending, submitting your questionnaires, it's coming to a close tomorrow. Uh, so also I'm going to share the link to it for those that are not familiarized with the RFI procedure, with the request for information procedure. Uh, it's a procedure that we created basically for being complementary to the AMA sessions uh for the ones that want to go in depth and on specific topics uh for asking specific questions to the foundation so i'm going to share those two links here one for the framework and one uh, linked directly to the uh to the thread in the forum to post your questions okay uh the other topic that we wanted to discuss or maybe it's something that we want to announce is that next week probably on monday we're going to we're going live with our first community pulse survey to gauge community sentiment and to serve as a baseline for a lot of topics that uh, are here in this DAO, such as demographics governance participation and decision making transparency DAO foundation synergy financials and core units so again, as we did with the uh, AMA survey, we go, we're going to share this and we hope uh, all of you can participate and share your insights and your sentiment on the different topics that I just mentioned. Uh, well, we'll keep you posted about it, but again, probably going live uh, during next week. Uh, with that said, I'm passing it to Nat for Strategic Comms. Hi there. Can you hear me? All good?
Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for being here today. It's great to see uh, such an awesome turnout and so excited for all that we have lined up um, shortly after I speak for you guys. So I wanted to first off send a reminder to all the grantees and community members that we do have a calendar that you guys are welcome to use. I'm going to post that here in the chat for you guys post any events that you guys have on there and I'll do my best to also share those on social. We also have um, just another reminder, a request for POMO. Um, you guys are community members and grantees are free to use that and I also check those as well. So feel free to use that as well. Or you can also directly um, DM me as well if you have any uh, questions. I'm also continuing to um, work on my new um, Discord event, which will be that Brick by Brick Builders Club. Hopefully middle of next week, I'll have the update on the schedule for that for everybody. So again, for those of you who weren't last week, uh, last uh, I spoke about it, it's going to be an education inspiration focused meetup showcasing behind the scenes workflow tools for the creator community and working with foundation as well on that. Um, also, I'm um, continuing to work on um, Twitter also opened up the threads, Instagram, YouTube, and if none of you guys have checked those out yet, there's a lot of content from the community on there as well. And if you guys have educational videos, would love to share those up there as well. And next week, we have another Twitter Spaces lined up on July 18th with Bay, um, who will be giving us a special preview of Mesh, which is part of a Decentraland Metaverse Art Week, which launches next week on the 19th. So come for that special preview. It should be a fun event. We'll be running around and talking on uh, Twitter Spaces as well. And last but not least, we have a really special uh, in-world meetup today. We have our special guest Radix, which I saw him in the audience here from Wondermine, who will be our tour guide today. So um, stoked for that. And yeah, with that, I'll pass it back to you. Fede. Hey, Fractilian, could I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, of course. Um, for the Google Forms, for the events and the uh, promo request, if you have multiple events, um, sh should I, sh should you, should the person just submit like three times or will there be kind of like a option to provide more can, info? Yeah, you can, you there's like, I think I made it so you can pr provide as much as you want. So whatever you're most comfortable with, you want to do three or I can go back in there and make sure is it just that you didn't have enough space to add more or well I see like a uh, title of event and it has like you know oh, one line okay. I see you what know, you're doesn't have multiple yeah I'll change stuff that. Like that I'll add that I'll make it so it's more flexible for more events great great note thank you for that I'll change that you guys are doing great thank you thank you simple Thanks, Info, and thanks, Fractilian, for that update. And, well, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this meeting, uh, we're having right now uh, like a, a quick presentation from the three winners of the Sandstorm, Sandstorm Contest for our headquarters. Uh, and, well, the, the meaning of this, it's not to use, uh, just to be clear, just to be transparent, it, it's not that we're going to use those scenes, those, build, those buildings, but they were the winnings of the winners of the contest, and they had really great scenes, really great ideas, and we wanted to share it with the whole community because the for the ones that don't know, we recently created a working group for the inward headquarters for the DAO. So basically, what we, what we want to do is to show these three buildings, and then we are going to have uh, 15, 20 minutes to discuss about the. The, the actual building that we want to create in world and after that we are having the day world meeting so i am looking trevor trevor are you there oh yeah i'm here hey trevor well trevor was the won the third place for this uh contest so i'll pass it to him to introduce himself and to share uh his scene and the work he has done Oh, sorry. Maybe you said someone else. That's not, uh, I didn't win. I wasn't in the contest. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> My bad. Uh, who are the other ones? It's, uh, 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 risk Ova? here. I think an Ova, uh, what is it? Uh, the first yeah, yeah. Place Ova, Ova, Ova is the first place, but yeah. I was thinking on the third and the second place. Uh, risk is here. Yeah. I'm not sure if I okay. see him in there. Well, let's jump directly into the first place of the Sandstorm, Sandstorm Contest. So, Ova, you, you're our guest to, to present and then to jump into your, to your world to, 
and started discussions about the our town hall, our headquarters. Ooh. Some trippy audio issues, though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hey, hello, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? It's echoing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm going to pass it to you. I had you to Oba Design and only can speak Oba Jan. I think that is the same user. So that's why he has echo. Were you guys able to fix it or? Oh, can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my friend, he's, well, he's working, he's, he's abroad right now. So maybe his internet's kind of bad and I'm, I'm on my phone, so I don't have any to share for my screen, but yeah, o OVA stands for office for virtual architecture and our scene took inspiration from the logo of the, the, the Centrant logo. And I was wondering if you guys have, have you guys seen the scene or because right now we don't have anything to share on the screen right now. Oh, we're sharing it so you can. Is that you sharing it, um, Fede? We can or? see your streaming. Yep. Yeah, so our design is based on the logo of Decentraland and we want to create something really elegant and simple and structural. So since structure isn't really considered in the metaverse, so this design is a floating pyramid that has uh, structural elements. And people would enter the design from the bottom of the ground floor. And at the ground floor, there's also a place for congregations uh, on the outdoors. And yeah, so people enter from the center grand staircase into the, the building. Sorry. Do you have a link to that uh, scene? Um, I, I think my my friend shared it, but I don't. I'm on my phone currently, so I don't have it. I think it's in the headquarters um, working group channel. He posted that. Let me look for it, and I'll share it if I find once I find okay. it. Okay, mm. like that. Go yeah, on, so, sorry. Yeah, so people would enter the main space from the the grand staircase, and once you enter, there's two directions. To the left and right, there's a chilling space and also a meeting space where people can discuss and hang out. And we did some custom pyramid de designs for the lightings and also the desks and chairs and benches. And yeah, and you can exit from the corners of the buildings because. And uh, you can also walk up the stairs to the main meeting room spaces. So here we, we imagine this whole pyramid just to be a, a space filled with a lot of people meeting in the center with someone in the same in the center stage. And there's also a special feature of going to the moon at the, the top of the meeting space. So once you're over there, you can jump into that light lighting ball and go up to the moon. And this was inspired by the Berlin City Hall, where it's called Reichstag. They also have this whole whole space where civilians can go up to the top of the architecture and they can observe the people and the higher ups mm -hmm. when they're in the meetings. So we wanted to have that same experience where people are on top of the meetings and they can observe down into, into the main congregation meeting spaces. And they can also just jump inside to the meeting. I think my friend missed the mark, but when you, you jump down, you can just actually jump into the, the top of the meeting space. And yeah, so this is basically our design. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, yeah, sorry that Risk is not here. Uh, I think we have his scene deployed in a world, so we're going to share it later. But, oh, that's dope. <laughs> uh, didn't see that. Um, but yeah, we basically wanted to share this, uh, these builds that, uh, that won the contest and participated uh, in the contest and yeah have a quick meeting with you all to discuss uh, about what what do we want uh, how do we want our headquarters uh, be so uh before the open forum and jumping into the um, 
to the inward meetup. Uh, we invite you all to participate in, in this quick meeting and discuss about the main topics that we mentioned in the working group, such as the line selection for the building of our headquarters, location, plot size, etc., architectural decisions, features and infrastructure, functionalities, and what what do we think uh, uh, or how do we think the community is going to be uh, benefited with this? So uh, I think Nikki is here too. She's helping with the facilitating the the working group. So again, I invite you all to join this this world, and I'll open it to to everyone that wants to comment something on the on the ideas of the the in world headquarters that we want to build. Okay, thank just you. for an, just for just for an intro, um, uh, what we've been discussing in the in the working group in the dedicated channel for the headquarters, it's mainly about the plot size because we wanted to define uh, that like the the large of the the plot mm -hmm. size before actually defining what do we want to build and having the architectural decisions and the features and stuff like that. Uh, Right now, we are uh, handling the possibility of having a three by three plot or a four by four four plot, but but yeah, we are still discussing that. And based on that, we also want to know what are the the thoughts of the community and what do we what what are musts here in our in our future headquarters. I think one of the biggest uh, points that I'm looking for is interoperability possibilities. So not only creating a scene that is stable within our own ecosystem, but something that is easily portable to other metaverses so that we can have a presence and kind of create more of a gateway between the different metaverses, um, which is why I think a three by three or something of that nature would be appropriate um, because not only is it a good size for our uh, ecosystem, but it's a good size for other worlds and stuff like that that don't have boundaries. Um, and I think it's a good idea. Somebody had mentioned in one of the working channels of showing off the current grantee programs and past succeeding grant programs and stuff like that. So having the real estate available to do that for the ones that exist now and the ones that exist in the future is really important, as well as having, you know, an auditorium for people to be in and stuff. Well, that's really important, really interesting. Besides the like the architect architecture and the plot size and everything, this has to be useful for the whole community, right? We have to take advantage of this building uh, that we're talking about and showcase uh, grantees and showcase community events and and everything. Uh, so this this uh, is not meant to be only uh, like a, like a scene with a stage and with a, with a place where we can have our town halls, but also that we, what we want to do is like create a whole experience for the central Andau here. And well, the ending point of this is that we want to have our town halls and most of, most of our events here in world. No, I love so that. yeah. Another thing I was thinking would be really interesting is to have, I think CK had mentioned this before, obviously, like the kind of like an onboarding educational component, also maybe creating like a Tao history museum just to educate, you know, those who are entering. Um, but yeah, there's so many possibilities and the beauty of it, it's always, we can always evolve and change with what we all want. Yeah, I love what you're writing on there, <laughs> CK. Yeah, I mean, this this hasn't again. This hasn't this doesn't need to be only the place for for discussion or for meeting, but also again a a, a huge experience for the Central Landau, a, a place for onboarding users too. I think that's something that we also discuss in the working group. Uh, this has to be the place where new DAO users or where new uh, the Central Land users come to learn how to DAO and how to to engage with the platform. Yeah, we could have like, like you were just saying on there, we can have like head uh, curators, we can have docents, people who volunteer to guide people daily if they want to hang out there and help on board, just like in people do in Genesis or all over that the community already does, but it'd be great. 
And also, well, again, we have the, the other stuff to discuss as, as architectural decisions and the features that we want and the infrastructure that we want to have here. For example, we need for sure a streaming service here to, to present the, the grant updates, presentations from the squads. Uh, well, a water slide is a, it's a really good idea too. Uh, this hasn't, we probably want also to, to have some mini games here, uh, some meeting rooms for not, not only this huge room, this stage for everyone to, to, to be part of the town halls, but also meeting rooms for everyone to use them. So again, mic open, this is just a quick ad hoc section for brainstorming ideas and for uh, like sharing with you that there's an active working group for building our headquarters. And like the, the, the main uh, objective that we have with this is to create a pitch proposal and go through the bidding and tendering flow with all the specifications and everything that we want to have under that they are must on our town hall, our future headquarters to, to be as, as, as transparent as we can. So um, maybe I can share the specification that I wrote a couple of years ago when I was doing some exploration on this sure. on, um, past grant. And then I'll just before I link that in the chat, because it's maybe just historically interesting and sort of a place to add on. But um, maybe I'll just share my screen and show the scene that I built for um, that project. And we can use that as a discussion for some functionality. Great. And I'll put the link in ch the chat as well. Can you all see this uh, scene? Yep. Do you screen share? Okay, so this is what uh, Frankie Needles and I built a couple of years ago. And um, the core idea is just that um, the grants or a current proposal should be accessible in world and you should be able to sort of read them using the UI. So there's like this central UI queue or a proposal queue where you can add uh, proposals to discuss. And then uh, you can go upstairs and discuss them on the big board and there's like a simple facilitation podium, just sort of prototype stuff. And uh, if you wanna read the proposals, you can, the longer ones are scrolling, et cetera. And you can look at old proposals too by going downstairs and clicking on these untextured books at the bottom. So that's basically the, the project. I think a lot of the emphasis was just on what is the like how much of a link can we create between the DAO as it exists in the web app and also the the world as it exists like you know people have the same wallet so we should be able to create some functionality where you could vote in world or you know at least be able to read the proposals so this is sort of where we got and what we came up with and uh I'll post a link to the, the specification that we wrote and maybe that can be sort of just interesting for everyone who's working on it now. Thanks a lot, Trevor. Yeah, this is this is huge. Like having the possibility of voting or reading proposals and or, or everything is is the actual thing that I think we should look towards, right? It's like merging finally the, the discussions in the DAO with in-world uh, experiences. So Again, I think this opportunity for building our headquarters in world is also the opportunity for merging that experiences, the DAO and the, the and the central and the platform. Uh, I'll leave it. Uh, well, thanks for for sharing that. I'll give you again some time for you to to share your ideas, your comments on this. Uh, and if there's anything else, uh, we'll jump into the into the open forum for you to ask any questions regarding specific topics that you want to to chat about. And after that, we're having our in-world meetup uh, at Wondermine. I'm going to share the link for 
the headquarters working group for all you to be aware what's going on there. And yeah, open mic for all you to discuss about the headquarters building. Referring to the current one that we're on right now, or just uh, in general, what we see? No, in general, in general. Just this, this. Sorry, I, I wasn't clear, uh, or maybe I wasn't uh, that clear. Uh, this was just uh, the winner of the contest of the sun, sandstorm contest that we wanted to bring it for all of us, not only to promote it, but also to to start gathering and discussing different ideas. I think architecturally, I love this, but there's some things that we might need to add to this to create a, a complete experience uh, mm. for, for the headquarters. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it would be a, kind of like a good idea to just get in a general outline, um, like, like even on the, I guess the aesthetic, like, do we want it to be like a grand stage or like kind of like a auditorium kind, kind of, uh, or do we want to kind of like make it uh, unique and different than that? Exactly. Yeah, like, it's like our vision of who I'd like. Exactly. Uh, well, that that's what, why we created the, the working room, but that's also why Nick is helping us with this, because we want this to be like the representation of the DAO in the world. And it again, it doesn't need to be like an auditory or an office or uh, or a plaza or an I don't know, but but this that's the core of of this thing. Uh, we need to to discuss everything. From the from the plot size uh, to the architecture and the features and every everything that we want, uh, everything that we think it will represent us and and that will help the community uh, to create awareness about the grantees and the the community building and everything. I do like the the architecture for this one. Hits home with the whole like you know wanted a kind of uh, reference it from the DCL logo, making it a big pyramid, kind of hits home with us here. Totally agree, totally agree. Charles, yeah. you were about to say something? Okay, again, uh, I've shared the, the link to the headquarters uh, working group. We we are putting slowly putting together uh, like um, how will I say uh, like a specification stock for everything that we've decided uh, regarding the plot, regarding the architecture and everything. So yeah, yeah. where this basically was to to promote that working group yeah. and to share the sorry. Was anyone saying something? I think it was a hot mic. Oh, sure. okay. No. But yeah, we're we're working on a brief. We are working on well using the working groups framework to give shape to this. So well, that was pretty much all. Sorry for not being as organized as, as we always are with the presentations. Uh, Chris uh, couldn't make it, uh, and I presented um, Trevor as the third place. Uh, sorry, I got confused. But yeah, uh, so with that said, uh, we can jump now into the open forum section. So if you want to discuss about anything that's on your mind right now, uh, or if you want to ask questions to the to the squads, it's your opportunity. And then we're going to jump into the in-war meetup. Okay, well, uh, again, with that said, just wanted to remind you that next town hall it's going to be held in the town hall stage channel. We didn't have the time to announce that we we're going to move uh, to that, but but yeah, from now on we're going to use that Discord feature because it's a more organized way to like to unmute and mute, to invite speakers and to share screen and everything. Uh, because we had a like a really great experience with the candidates debate. So I think that's pretty much all. I'll pass it to Fractilians for the in-war meetup. <laughs>